It takes a bold, bold TV series to kill off one of its true star attractions and still continue on for several more seasons. Even more so, it takes an extremely smart and impressive show to do that and somehow manage to only improve on the project's quality levels. Many small screen offerings have opted to kill off their lead or another headline act in order to drum up some buzz, yet so many of those decisions have backfired by making that series distinctly worse in the fallout of these major character deaths. Misfits and Skins are a pair of shows who make a habit of rotating their key cast, yet the vast majority of those deaths sadly only hindered the two series. Making any such call is always a risky one, but there are some great examples of shows that did that very thing and managed to thrive in the aftermath of such demises. Whether that's introducing new characters or merely allowing existing characters to step up and have more time in the sun, it's been proven that it's far from impossible to use a big name death as a launching pad for a better overall product. So with that in mind then, I'm Ellie with What Culture here with 10 TV shows that got better after the main character's death. Number 10. Charmed, Prue Halliwell For Charmed's first three seasons, the magical trio of Prue, Piper and Phoebe Halliwell were our main protagonists, with Shannon Doherty, Holly Marie Combs and Alyssa Milano in those respective roles. While all was going relatively well on screen for these three, things were falling apart behind the scenes. Most notably, Doherty and Milano were forever butting heads, to the extent that the Prue character was killed off as Shannon Doherty was fired or quit, depending on who you believe. The off-screen end for Prue came at the close of the series' third season, with a battle against the demon known as Shax, enough to leave her with wounds that she was unable to recover from. And how did Charmed cope with the loss of likely its biggest name? Why it simply brought in Rose McGowan as the Hallowell's long-lost half-sister Paige to fill that void. Not just did Paige act as a more than suitable replacement for Prue, but the show itself remained successful enough to warrant another five seasons. Sure, the direction may be drifted a little too much towards more traditional soap opera tropes in later seasons, yet Charm still proved an entertaining beast whose passionate fanbase continued to grow as the years went on. Number 9. DC's Legends of Tomorrow, Rip Hunter The man who formed the Legends team, so much of DC's Legends of Tomorrow's debut season had Rip Hunter taking centre stage as he led this ragtag group through time in their mission to stop the nefarious Vandal Savage. Season 2 Two of Legends saw Rip battle, then join, then battle once more the Legion of Doom, and he'd then create the Time Bureau before eventually sacrificing himself to help stop Malice in the show's third year. Since then, Legends of Tomorrow has largely improved with each passing season. While Arrow became all doom and gloom and The Flash has become too reliant on paint-by-numbers villains, Legends and Supergirl have continued to impress when it comes to the CW's Arrowverse. For Legends, a big part of that is how the show has embraced the insanity of time travel and the limitless possibilities that throws up. Whilst all the team, despite Sarah being the actual leader, feel like they're equals in terms of responsibilities and screen time. Since Hunter's death, the Legends have added several new faces to their ranks, having battled brilliantly fun rogues like Neron and Astra Logue, and the show continues to balance serious real-world themes with outrageous dumb entertainment. Number 8. Boardwalk Empire, Jimmy Darmody when Boardwalk Empire began in 2010, the two lead characters of this latest HBO spectacle were Steve Buscemi's Nookie Thompson and Michael Pitt's Jimmy Darmody. For so much of the series' first two seasons, the focus was often on the father-son relationship of Nookie and Jimmy, with Darmody becoming more and more troubled and erratic as the show went on. That behaviour would eventually lead to Jimmy's death at the end of season two, with him shot dead by Nookie after embarking on a dark, destructive spiral fueled by booze and heroin. A World War I veteran who, as he himself put it, never mentally made it home from the war, Darmody's death was both inevitable and surprising at the same time. It seemed destined to happen, yet Nookie surely wouldn't really pull the trigger on his protégé. Once Nookie did pull the trigger on his protégé though, Boardwalk Empire grew as a show. With Jimmy out of the picture, other characters were afforded more time in the spotlight. Likewise, the series' third season also introduced some fantastic new faces, with Bobby Cannavale's Jip Rossetti a particular standout addition to butt heads with Nookie. Number 7. Homeland, Nicholas Brody During its first few seasons, Homeland was Brody and Carrie. A presumed dead Marine, Damian Lewis's Sergeant Nicholas Brody had made his heroic return home as Homeland started. Skeptical of Brody and his story of being held captive by terrorists, we had Claire Danes' Carrie Matheson, and with 
with tensions often high between the two, it didn't take long for a will-they-won't-they -they romance to emerge between these two lead characters. Following plenty of twists, turns, fallouts and makeups, the story of Brody came to a tragic end in season 3, as he was hanged in Iran as a watching crowd cheered for his death. Losing a character as great and multi-layered as Brody was one major concern for Homeland fans, and likewise losing an actor as talented as Damian Lewis, who had won an Emmy Award for this role, was worrying. Yet the series only improved with Brody out of the way. Carrie became the anchor of the show, Sol Berenson became pivotal, and Homeland also developed an eerie habit of foreshadowing real-life happenings, such as President-elect Elizabeth Keene's battle with the intelligence community, mirroring what was soon to come from Donald Trump. Trump and his national security fight. Number 6. Roseanne, Roseanne Connor Now it takes a special sort of ass to behave so atrociously that not only does your character get killed off, but the entire show in question is cancelled. That was infamously the case with Roseanne Barr and her self-titled Roseanne show. With the series having been warmly received when it returned to air in 2018 for a tenth season after 22 years away, that return was short-lived when social media comments from Barr resulted in the show being axed. Those comments were directed towards Valerie Jarrett, a former advisor of Barack Obama's. With these horrendous remarks causing ABC to cut ties with Barr and cancel the show, the only silver lining is that Roseanne lived on and absolutely thrived without its eponymous star. While Roseanne itself was cancelled, the rest of the show's characters were able to continue on in a spin-off effort, The Connors. Killing off the Connor clan's matriarch and revealing her to have had a long-standing secret drug problem, the series initially found Dan and the rest of the family grieving their loss, and The Connors and its four seasons to date have flourished when the series characters moved on from Roseanne, to the point that the most recent episode as of this recording even had Dan remarry. Number 5. Teen Wolf, Alison Argent The third season, Death, of Crystal Reed's Alison Argent is viewed as the most shocking of Teen Wolf's many, many demises. Across those three years, Alison had cemented herself as likely the most popular character on the show amongst fans. Starting life as a rather generic teenager, Reed's Alison grew into a total badass who was just as handy with a bow and arrow as any one of Green Arrow, Hawkeye, Katniss Everdeen or Robin Hood. Unfortunately for Alison, her fate was sealed once she was stabbed with an only sword in the insatiable episode. Going into that episode, fans had been told to expect a notable death, yet few could have predicted such a hugely popular character would be the one to bite the bullet. While Teen Wolf experienced an Allison-shaped hole in the aftermath of this, the MTV series would have its best days still to come, with the next three seasons viewed by many as being superior to its three predecessors. Of course, that matter is subjective, but the point here is that Teen Wolf was still able to carry on and deliver the goods even after killing off its female lead. Number 4. Grey's Anatomy, Dr. George O'Malley Now while Ellen Pompeo's Meredith Grey is clearly the main character of Grey's Anatomy, the early goings on of this ABC show was very much an ensemble as Grey and her fellow interns got to grips with the day-to-day -day life of a surgeon. For TR Knight's George O'Malley, he was one of the four interns who started alongside Meredith, and he was a major part of the series' formative years. So when George brutally died, it was a genuine gut punch. Admittedly, George had been underutilised in Season 5, but the handling of his death stands as one of the most impactful moments in Grey's Anatomy history. By this point, specialising in trauma surgery, O'Malley decided he wanted to join the military. As his colleagues plan to talk him out of this career change, they find themselves dealing with a disfigured John Doe case, where a man was flattened by a bus as they saved someone else from being run over. That man, of course, would ultimately be George O'Malley. The death of George made Grey's Anatomy more compelling due to the initial shock and subsequent fallout of this demise. As for the show as a whole, while it's recently started its 19th season, showcasing just how much of a true powerhouse it has become over the years. Of course, as well, George O'Malley is just one of many in the long list of main characters who kick the bucket in Grey's Anatomy in the subsequent seasons. Number 3. The Walking Dead, Rick Grimes Ok, ok, sure, Rick Grimes hasn't been killed off in The Walking Dead, but it's hard to argue that the exit of Andrew Lincoln's character hasn't coincided with an upturn in quality for AMC's previously sagging show. Rick is still alive and out there somewhere, with him gearing up to have his story continued in a trilogy of Walking Dead movies. In his absence, the main The Walking Dead show has spun its fortunes around and become a whole lot more fun. Rick Grimes is a modern-day great TV character, 
character, but he'd realistically done all that he could in The Walking Dead. At best, audiences needed a break from Rick. At worst, the character needed permanently removing. This is someone who had been front and centre for 120 episodes by the time he was airlifted to wherever in Season 9's What Comes After. We'd had determined Rick, we'd had angry Rick, we'd had sad Rick, we'd had crazy Rick, complete with marvellous beard, and we'd seen this once great character start to be one of the things dragging The Walking Dead down. It may not have quite hit the heights of the show's prime, but the post-Rick The Walking Dead seasons have been vastly superior to the prior couple of years. The Whisperers arrived, Michonne was able to shine, Negan has become an anti-hero, and all the core characters feel on a way more equal footing than when Rick was the clear main attraction. Number 2. Game of Thrones – Ned Stark By the time Game of Thrones rolled to a close in 2019, the vast majority of the HBO juggernaut's headline attractions had been killed off along the way. Taking the prestigious honour of being the first Main Thrones character to die, of course, was Sean Bean's Ned Stark. While it's becoming a running joke that Bean must die in whatever he appears in, Thrones felt, well, different. In how the marketing of this series was handled, Ned was the glue that held so much of the show together up until he was beheaded in Throne's ninth episode. The second to last outing of the series' debut year, Baylor shocked us all, well, bar those who'd read George R. R. Martin's source material, by killing off the person who was absolutely positioned as the show's lead figure. Some may not have been happy with how Game of Thrones concluded, but there's no doubt the series went from strength to strength in the aftermath of Ned's death, becoming one of the most must-see TV shows of all time. The beheading of Ned Stark not only helped to push so much of the future narrative of Thrones, especially in how his children all grow, but it hammered home to audiences that all bets were off when it came to this burgeoning behemoth of a show. Number 1. Bates Motel – Norma Bates with Bates Motel, it's not that the show was bad before the death of Norma Bates, but more that Norma's demise took the series to another level of quality for its final season. In many people's opinion, Bates Motel is the greatest TV series of the past decade and is a show that immediately set the bar high with just how damn good it was, before then maintaining a ridiculous level of high quality across its five-season run. The death of Vera Farmiga's Norma happens in the penultimate episode of Bates Motel's penultimate season, with the cause of death being carbon monoxide poisoning. Of course, this was part of a bungled murder-suicide plan of Freddie Highmore's Norman. Why was said plan bungled? Well, that's because Norman himself wound up being unsuccessful with his attempt to take his own life. As a result of this, the rest of the Bates Motel sees Highmore's character's descent into madness amped up to 11. By the time Bates Motel jumps forward two years for its final season, we have a Norman who is happy to kill, who is fully in the midst of being mother, and who has his Mars frozen and corpse hidden in the basement. And that concludes our list. If you think we missed any, then do let us know in the comments below. And while you're there, don't forget to like and subscribe and tap that notification bell. Also, head over to Twitter and follow us there, and I can be found across various social medias just by searching Ellie Little Child. I've been Ellie with What Culture. I hope you have a magical day, and I'll see you real soon.